She tried to say they started making they started making bath salt and turn into this. Damn. Yeah. One favorite industry nickname for the body shop is the shoddy body. And the list goes on and I'm only out of fifty. So we're barely through a fifth of the way of John's research, and I seriously have to give kudos to him because it's all incredibly well done, and I think we can all appreciate some serious research on this channel. He covers every single aspect of the body shop, from the minute they were founded to the minute they were founded. He mentions the procedures the FDA took issue with in 1993, and at one point mentions that one of their sample shampoos had 400% more bacteria in it than allowed by FDA standards. Apparently, they didn't recall it and kept sending samples well, it depends out. Depends on what type of bacteria. You know what I'm saying? Like. By skipping swab tests that measure bacteria counts. Their facial oils regularly turn rancid. The FDA received 167 complaint letters for their IDO in 1992, potentially because the molds found present in 1990 were ignored, but that's another gross story. Oko Tess, a respected German green consumer magazine, found formaldehyde in at least four BSI products and tests from 1991 to 1994. German scientist Dieter Wundrum, who conducted the test and later became a BSI consultant, says he believes it is a byproduct of using large quantities of preservatives to mask bacterial problems. Their products are filled with bugs, says Wundrum. There is no one there I can talk to. They don't have a head scientist. They take none of my advice. They claim to be against animal testing from the start, and yet none of their early literature mentions it. Roger has even been quoted as saying, we do need a silly label. The only people who care about this issue are burned out ex-hippies. When Mark Constantine, one of John's sources, suggested they could not test it on animal slogan on their products. It seems she only liked the idea of promoting cruelty free products when it suited her narrative, or, you know, more favorably, whenever it suited her wallet. Her wallet apparently backed multiple nonprofits into a corner to sell products to her at a cheaper rate. In 1995, she was featured in People magazine in Ghana for touring a trade not aid project. Yet those villages she's visiting with a happy smile aren't seeing orders from her company anymore, even when the villages kept processing going to meet the body shop's promise of future orders. In a similar case, the body shop's poster campaign promotion for the Pueblo's blue corn line featured a hoppy Indian woman wearing Sunni jewelry with Mayans in the background. BSI has purchased only a few thousand dollars of blue corn since the project's inception. In its first two years, the project has brought the Pueblos around $15,000. BSI claims to have provided the Indians a mill. The mill turned out to be a mill machine. BSI loaned the Indians $2,000, which was paid back against gross receipts. Brook Industries hydrolyzes the blue corn powder for use in a face mask product. Its president, Jeffrey Brook, says the ingredient we used is such small amount that it has no efficacy. It's all for show Man. and public relations, Brook says. BSI turned him down when he wanted to sell the hydrolyzed blue corn to other companies that could expand the customer base for the Indians so it could be a genuinely sustainable project. Brooke calls Roderick a modern-day colonist who exploits native cultures. They've also lied about being the first feminist organization. Again, probably just for profit's sake when it suits their wallets. They change their stores, seem to lie about profits they make. Quality control is a consistent problem for them. And well, I don't know, if I keep going, the script is just gonna turn into a two-part video. And I'll just take one more thing from NT's research before I move on with this quote. I visited the plant a few years ago, wrote one former auditor who asked to remain anonymous. It was weird to see these truly gigantic extrusion machines, each the size of a family house, pumping out millions of plastic bottles while 18-wheelers drove.